the in 1640s, 1650s, Charles Carroll the settler, Charles Carroll number one, had come to Maryland expecting to be the Attorney General. When he got here, Oliver Cromwell was taking over in England and uh, Catholics were disqualified from holding office, so he wasn't able to become Attorney General. Um, Lord Baltimore were also Catholics, so they're favorably disposed to him. Lord Baltimore had ran his land office, patenting out land all over Maryland, uh, in the hands of Henry Darnell. Uh, Henry Darnell had a daughter, and the fine tradition of, of upper mobility, when uh, Charles Carroll the Settler, a widower, uh, couldn't get a job as Attorney General, he married Darnell's daughter. Uh, the, they were operating the land office, where Baltimore <coughs> land office, and there was apparently some inside trading going on. <laughs> In any case, by the time that Charles Carroll the Settler died, he took over the land office after Henry Darnell died. And when Charles Carroll the Settler died in 1720, he had 60,000 acres of Maryland land. Was perhaps one of the richest men in uh, North America because of that land. <coughs> He's the grandfather of Charles Carroll of Carrollton, uh, who comes along a generation or so later. The son of Charles Carroll the Settler, Charles Carroll of Annapolis. He was a lawyer, he could engage in equity practice even though he was still barred for the most part from engaging in otherwise in law practice because he was Catholic. Uh, and he had major land holdings that he had inherited from his father. Uh, and he owned the parcel of land. He had bought uh, Todd's Range in 1702 from, uh, from Todd, uh, which is where Baltimore started out, uh, and he convinced the General Assembly to authorize the erection of a town on his, his parcel on the harbor. It's thought to be a, a good and better basin in Joppa for, for trade. Uh, Seventeen twenty nine then is when Baltimore Town was erected within Baltimore County. It had more municipal governance than the county as wide, county at wide, which had just the county governance. In 1768, the county seat, seat of the courthouse and the jail, were moved from Joppa Town to Baltimore Town. Uh, the move was primarily an economic one. Joppa Town was dying. They cut down all those trees and the harbor was silting in and the newer vessels could no longer uh, berth in Joppa Town. Uh, Baltimore Town <coughs> was thriving. Baltimore Town leaders convinced the, the assembly to move the county seat from, uh, from Joppa to Baltimore. Uh, the county court <coughs> moved from Joppa Town to Baltimore. A new courthouse was erected. It's depicted in the slide. A new jail was erected. Uh, and the business of Baltimore County, county seat of Baltimore County, would now be in Baltimore. There were some downsides to Baltimore. Uh, the, primarily, the primary one was malaria because of the marsh around the, around the harbor, the marsh, the malarial, the malarial marsh is what we now call Harbor East. It <laughs> <laughs> was, was a problem. Uh, it was alleged that the courthouse and the prison in Joppa were in disrepair and the port was on the wane and the move was made. Another major reason was that Tobacco was no longer as economically important as an agricultural product as wheat, and Baltimore had much better access to the, to the wheat fields of the West, uh, and had, had 
a number of mills. The Elliott brothers had mills and also mills along the Jones Falls. It made Baltimore a, an economically vibrant and growing place. In 1782, let me recap where we are. We've got Baltimore County. Baltimore City is a separate town within Baltimore County. It's the county seat. But they're still together. Uh, Baltimore Town Fathers convinced the Maryland Assembly to levy and collect property taxes independently from Baltimore County. They were cutting the fiscal strings. They were getting their independence back. This created some, some tension. What were the, was there a differential between the tax rate in Baltimore County, outside of the city, and within Baltimore City? Uh, and a problem that persists perhaps yesterday, uh, between these neighboring subdivisions, you may see starkly differential tax rates, which may in turn sort of complicate their relationship. But uh, more on that to come from, uh, from Matt Prince in a, in a moment. The collection of taxes uh, was now handled by a special commission of uh, tax collectors for Baltimore City. Matt and I were talking beforehand, we are sort of scratching our heads, so how did it work? Did Baltimore City people pay both the county tax and the, uh, and the city tax, or one or the other? That question may yet be not yet be answered by the experts in house, but I'm sure there's an answer somewhere. <coughs> uh, still moving forward, it's 1796. This is a quote from the Enabling Act: Baltimore Town in Baltimore, in Baltimore City shall be hereby erected to a body politic and corporate by the name of the Mayor, City Council of Baltimore. We still use that, that name, that's everywhere. Uh, the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore replaced Baltimore Town Commissioners that had been there since 1729. Baltimore still had the courthouse serving both Baltimore County and Baltimore City still had the jail serving both Baltimore County and Baltimore City, but it was moving towards independence. Uh, but it remained the county seat of Baltimore County, uh, so the two, the, the, the ju jurisdiction remains as one. But Baltimore City is coming more and more independent in some ways, with respect to taxing power and with respect to government. In 1816, uh, the growing Baltimore City, uh, county seat of Baltimore County, uh, extended its boundaries to the precincts, to, to North Avenue. And uh, Matt Cranston's going to talk a good deal about this. Uh, so let's leave that alone. I don't know very much. <laughs> In 1827, a big event occurred. Uh, the governance of Baltimore County, which had been in the hands of the county court, was transferred to three county commissioners. Uh, we're moving towards more towards the sort of governance that we would expect. Uh, people who run and administer the county, not judges, they're commissioners or people like that. And they took over then, managing the revenues received by the Baltimore County taxes, uh, except within Baltimore City, where Baltimore City had its separate tax collection mechanism and its se separate uh, repository of funds. So we now recoup 
Let's see if I've got this straight. Baltimore County is, now has a court system that hears cases, civil and criminal. It also has commissioners that run the county. Um, ordinarily, they would take care of the courthouse and the jail, but they're in Baltimore City, so that function pretty much shared with Baltimore City, which has increasing autonomy, but it still is the county seat of Baltimore County, and uh, only somewhat independent. And now, now it happens. In 1851, there's a new constitution. The clips you see are scans from the constitution. Uh, Article 4, Judiciary Department, has a simple little proposition that resulted in a major change. I don't know if you can read that old print, but essentially it puts Baltimore County and Baltimore City in separate judicial districts. Baltimore City now has its own judicial district. 